everyone. This is Melanie from Melanie B's Creative Studio, and today we're going to talk about nothing but flowing. So the first question I get is, why do I need flow aid? What does it do? So it does just what the name says it does. It increases and enhances the flow of your paint. So the flow is described mostly as how the paint moves on your canvas or on your surface. So the reason we use flow aid is because if we use just water, it can dilute our paint to the point where it becomes transparent. And we need paints that are opaque because we have to cover lines and numbers with paint by number. So, you know, that is the purpose is we want a paint that is not so thin down that it won't cover those things. So when you use Flow Aid, it actually makes the paint just so much smoother and also it extends the life of your paint. So when you look at that little tiny paint pot and you're going, oh my gosh, is this enough paint to get me through this entire 16 by 20 canvas? And you're kind of freaking out a little bit. I'm just gonna tell you that, and I'm probably gonna have to knock on some wood here, but I have never run out of a paint color and I've been doing paint by numbers for two years. So the reason I say that is because when you gesso your canvas, you put clear gesso down your canvas, y'all, those are totally other videos. I have a lot of clear gesso videos because that is the number one thing I recommend for you guys to start with as far as tools. But Flow Aid is like <laughs> sitting there fighting it for first place. To me, if you get nothing else, you need a clear gesso and you need a flow medium. So what this does is by adding a drop to your paint pot or two, you can get the paint to be the consistency that you need it to be. It's going to make it go on smoother and makes it go a little further as well. I get this particular question literally 20 times a week minimum. And so I'm going to address it here so that I can just say, okay, you guys go watch this so-and-so video because I only have a certain amount of time that I can allot to responding to people. And I wanna make sure that they're getting the answers they need. So I definitely needed to put this in a video saying it straight up and out there for everybody. First of all, you guys, I've been using Flow Aid for a year and a half. Yes, I've read the bottle and it says dilute it. I get that. We're not adding this to acrylic paints that are in tubes that are thick. We're not adding this to heavy body paints. We're adding this Flow Aid to a paint that is already a thin down consistency. So here is what I wanna make sure I, I point out. I'm very aware that it does suggest that you dilute it. So that's what I have here. Now in some of my first videos that I have published, I didn't tell y'all that because it was so overwhelming to begin with. All the information I was throwing out there to you was super overwhelming. So I thought, okay, there's some things we're just gonna have to discuss at a later time. And since I did that, I'm regretting it because I get this question so much that I wish I had just said it in those first videos. But yes, I use it diluted. But yes, I do use it full strength sometimes. And you're probably asking, well, how do I know which one to do? Well, if your paint is thick when you open your paint pot, it might require a few drops of diluted Flow Aid. So what I put in this jar is one part Flow Aid, which would be one drop and 20 drops of water, okay? Well, I don't always measure it out that way, but you know, I'll put a couple of drops in here and then I will fill it up about a quarter of the way full and I keep a pipette nearby and that is how I dispense it. I do use it diluted, but I also use it straight. So what I do is I determine by the consistency of that paint pot, what it's gonna need. You know, which one is it going to require? If I put a drop of Flow Aid in there straight and it feels like it doesn't give me that movement I need, I might go back and add a couple of drops of diluted Flow Aid and then stir that in and see what, what I'm working with. The most important thing for me to tell you is to try to achieve a particular consistency. I brought a couple of paint pots over here 
for demonstration purposes. These are shipper paints, and I'm gonna get into this in a minute about whether you need to add it to this or not, but we're gonna talk about that last. So you can see that the texture of this paint is really nice. It's got the little peaks, but it's a creamy paint. Now I'm gonna get my stir stick here. And yes, I have this in the bottom in the description for you guys if you wanna go link to that. If you stir this, see how creamy it is? It's a beautiful paint. But when I'm putting this on a canvas, sometimes it feels like it doesn't move. It's just kind of gloppy. And that's probably not the right term because it's not like it's a bad thing. It's just, it doesn't move and I'm using more paint than I need to. So I'm gonna compare one of these paints with just a drop or two of regular straight flow aid. And I'm gonna do the same thing with just a drop or two of diluted flow aid. And I'm gonna show you the difference. But let's talk about what we want this paint to look like because this is really beautiful creamy paint. So this one, I'm going to go ahead and just show you using a couple of drops of diluted Flow Aid. I'm gonna put three drops. And then I'm gonna take something that I can stir with. I'm going to stir that in and mix it up really well. Stirring from the bottom and getting everything it's in this little paint pot mixed in with that diluted flow aid. Now I'm gonna scoop out what's in here and add it to what's down here so that it all has the same amount. You see, this is not a drippy thin paint. It's not coming off there. Even though I've added a little bit of diluted flow aid, I didn't lose a lot of texture, but let's test its movement. Okay, so let's kind of do a before and after. What I'm gonna do is paint this paint up here that hasn't been affected by any flow aid at all. And I have to keep rotating my brush to make sure I've got plenty of paint. Now you can see right here how it looks a little dry already on the edge and it's kind of struggling and I'm just gonna try to pull it. You see how it's not really pulling that paint? That's why I wanted to add Flow Aid to begin with. Now, I've added the diluted Flow Aid in this part of the pot. Let's try that. And let's see if it moves a little better. Definitely a little creamier. But it's still a little thick because look, as I pull this out, it's going further but it's still got a lot of that same like brush stroke looking effect. So now I'm going to add straight Flow Aid. These are the same thing. They've just redone the bottle and now it's purple. So this is just my older one and I have still some in it to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this. I'm gonna use a fresh pipette for the Flow Aid so I don't contaminate it with any water. And I'm gonna get a little bit loaded into my pipette. And now I'm gonna drop a couple of drops of Flow Aid by itself. And let's stir that one up. You see how beautiful and creamy that is? Oh, it's beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna get the excess off. So I don't wanna waste it. And it's still so thick that it's not gonna drip. And let's try it this way. I'm not being very neat, y'all, I'm sorry. So let's keep going, pulling, and see how far I can get that to stretch before I need to do, put more on my brush. Okay, see the difference? So I'm a visual person and it really helps me to be able to hear and see something to make sure that I've got it or I've learned it. So to me, this is the best way to visually show you what the difference is. So let's go over this again. This is zero flow aid, none at all, right out of the paint pot. This one is adding three drops of diluted Flow Aid and water. This one is adding 
three drops of diluted flow aid and then two drops of straight flow aid. And you can see the difference on how it, how much further I got that to go with just that little bit of paint that I had on my paintbrush. Okay, so let's go into the next questions. Let's test the shipper paints. So you guys know that the shipper paints are a lot thinner to begin with. I've shown them on a couple like 10 videos now. <laughs> This is my set of shipper paints that I actually got in the 36 piece set. And what I'm gonna do is you can see these have already separated some, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start by stirring this up and mixing it all together before I do anything to this paint. With a shipper paint pot, most of the paint will get up in the lid and that's kind of how it's designed. It's like, this is the well. This is actually what I paint from is what's up in here. I don't really dip in here very much unless I need to add some of this into that. But anyway, let's go ahead and stir it up because you can see it had separated just sitting here. And it's a beautiful, beautiful consistency. So this one, I wouldn't do anything with. I'm not even gonna try to do it for the demonstration. I'm gonna get all of this paint off. And you'll notice when I take the paint off of this one, in this kind of paint pot, I do it into this part. If I do it in here, it gets sticky around the edge and then this will glue shut. So let's see if we can find one that needs something. Might be a little thicker. The shipper paints are so good, it's really hard to find one. But I do use Flow Aid once in a while and I'm gonna show you when I do that. Okay, these aren't gonna be the ones. All right, so these are too beautiful and a perfect consistency to where I don't even need to do it for the demo. So let me grab a different set. So I feel like this one might need something. This is kind of a sort of soft black. I've been using it for painting the border on one of my stretch canvases. Um, so I've been dipping into it, but it was a little thick. So this one might be a good one for us to test. First, let me go ahead and before I add anything to it, I'm gonna get it out and let's see what the consistency is like. It probably doesn't need it, but we're gonna do it anyway. All right, so beautiful consistency. I'm gonna go ahead and before I add anything, I'm gonna go ahead and paint one of my swatches. You can see the shipper paints give you a lot more distance before you have to re-dip into your paint pot. This is what we're trying to achieve with our flow aid and other paints. But let me show you what happens if I add a little diluted flow aid and I'm gonna go ahead and do two drops and let's stir that one up. Okay, now let's try this. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna go ahead and skip because I feel like I'm gonna need more width here. Now I'm gonna use the one beside it and I'm gonna add just flow aid to it and test it even though it does look really good. You'll notice that a lot of the thicker paint will settle up in the lid. And you see how it's really thick? And I can put it down in here and stir it. But when you're working with the shipper paints, the, you know, the longer you have them open, the more that they will thicken up. And the next time you go to work with them, you'll notice they're a little thick like this. So it's, a, it's still a fabulous paint. But what I do in this situation, let me go ahead and get this excess off as I'm just gonna add one drop or two, I always say one and add two, but I'm gonna put one drop up here in the top and one drop down in the bottom of just pure flow aid. Then I'm gonna take my little stirring stick. I make sure it's clean and it's not wet so it doesn't mess with our test. And then I can stir this in up here and it just gets such a perfect consistency. And then I can stir this down here and I have a drop in each one. 
And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take some of this, like I said, and I'll put it up here and kind of mix them up. And this is what we're gonna test now. So straight, now this is gonna be a different color, but just straight up Flow Aid one drop. So I realized as I was demonstrating this test that I had you off camera a little bit and it wasn't really clear and easy to see what I was doing. So I'm gonna redo that test for you guys and see how far we can get this to go. And I probably should have started with a new swatch, guys. <laughs> wow. Okay, so that is how much one drop of Flow Aid will work on the shipper. Now, if I come back to these later, and it's kind of thickened up, I will probably only use the diluted Flow Aid at that point. I don't want to create any kind of grittiness or graininess to these paints. So once I've added a little bit of Flow Aid, when I come back, I usually do a little diluted Flow Aid. But you can see from right here how that extended that paint. I mean, it's insane. That is with the drop of Flow Aid in the lid and in the bottom stirred with a shipper paint. And these tests were with the diluted Flow Aid in the shipper paint, no Flow Aid in the shipper paint, regular paint pot with no additive, no diluted Flow Aid or anything. This one is with diluted Flow Aid and this one is with pure Flow Aid. The next question I get a lot is I cannot get Flow Aid, what do I need to buy? So if you guys are in a country where you cannot get the Liquitex brand of Flow Aid additive, then there are a couple other options for people in other countries. And I went ahead and found a few items to give you the names of them so that if you can't get this particular brand, then you can find something else. It is basically called a Flow Improver. Flow Aid is the brand name for Liquitex. So Windsor Newton has something called Flow Improver. That's the same thing. It does the same thing as the Flow Aid. Uh, Mott Mart has a Flow Medium. Now their Flow Medium works the same as our Flow Aid. And then I've heard a lot of people say Floetrol, which is kind of a it's actually designed to use with latex paints. I know my husband talks about Floetrol all the time because he, you know, is a manager of a paint department at Lowe's. And so he recommends Floetrol for a lot of people and a lot of different uses. But I've heard it can also work instead of Float Aid. Now, I haven't tried it, so I don't want to sit there and say that's a definite replacement. But if you cannot get anything else and you cannot find the Flow Aid, then I would say try the Floetrol. Now, there's a that I think you can put in directly. It does not have to be diluted, but make sure you read the bottle of whatever you're using. And I hope this video kind of narrows down why I don't always use my Flow Aid diluted. I hope it made it easier to see this visually because to me, that's what, that is what I learned by. So I hope this has been really helpful for you guys. I appreciate you being here. Be sure to join me on Patreon and Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. The links for all of that is in below in the description. And you can find the tools that I've used today either in the links below for the Amazon Influencer Store for your country. And I appreciate you watching. Thanks as always for being here with me. And I'll see you back soon.